Howdy, y'all, and welcome to the Stay Creative Podcast, a show dedicated to sharing indie music one talented artist at a time, while also inviting you, the listener, to get more creative, to play more music, to make more art, and to share it with your friends and your family and the outside world. The world is a better place with you in it, with your creations in it, and when we communicate and we share those ideas and creations together. Today, I'm talking with Jeff of Moon Glow. He's going to share, of course, some insights and some uh, of his own personal journey with us, as well as some music, including a a sneak peek at a track from his upcoming release uh, set to hopefully come out on his birthday. So be sure you're uh, looking out for that to uh, support him in the best way that we can. I'll be sure to provide links to his music existing and, of course, any sort of uh, social media presence he has in the show notes of this episode. So, of course, you can follow up there, pre-save his uh, upcoming music, and and just connect with him as an artist and as a person online. So uh, I think it's going to be uh, worth your time to do so. So let's get into the interview. Jeff, please introduce yourself. Well, my name is Jeff. Um, I am an artist known as Moonglow. I uh, make music uh, with, you know, live folks or make music in the box, you know, the programming drums and whatnot. Um, and I work in recording studios. And that's, uh, those are most of the dimensions of my life. That's... <laughs> awesome. What do you do in the studios? Um, at this point in my career, most of the time I assist. I'm an assistant engineer. Um, but in my freelance life, I do engineer. And, and I've I've been fortunate to, you know, like, engineer a couple of cool records like nothing big you know but like you know so i'm, I'm getting there and getting cooler mm. session work in new york but you know doing a lot of assisting and freelancing on my own yeah that's cool man i know um there's a there's a time in human history when universities popped up and apprenticeships kind of stopped but there's still something magical about learning by watching the the you know quote unquote expert do you know that's cool yeah exactly and you know in the modern world if you're trying to make records, you know, really people can make records in the studio or, you know, on a good setup at home. But um, the trade of like being a recording engineer, on, like the professional level, there is something about needing to work at a like a professional studio to kind of get um, that, in my opinion. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to say stuff like that, but it is really good experience. It's a lot different than what, you know, a person might learn at like SAE or something. Um, like to work in the industry, you know. For sure, for sure. So, so when was that something that you wanted to do? Has music or music engineering always been something that really interested you? Um, it's always really interested me. My dad had this um, kind of weird, like Boss eight track recorder when I was young that took took zip discs. Um, so you can only fit what were zip discs like a hundred megabytes of data. Um, and I used to, I had an acoustic guitar and we had drums and I used to record like, you know, stupid, embarrassing little, like, um, I don't know, just like indie songs or like rock songs. And I had a lot of fun with it and I really enjoyed writing and I kept writing and uh, I got a little better with the recording process and. I went to college and I saved up some money and I started buying mics and, you know, a mixer and getting familiar with Logic, which is where I started. And then, um, you know, I went to college. I, I originally studied, like, the sciences. I studied physics for a couple of years. And then, um, you know, then I got, like, all distracted and tried a few other things and ended up in the engineering department. And this new major they added called audio and music engineering, which was... Um, like electrical engineering, but focused in music and audio. So, um, like audio electronics classes and like DSP programming. Um, and I don't know from, we had like, you know, production classes and studio classes too. And from there, I obviously the number one thing I enjoyed, there's a lot of cool stuff in there, but the number one thing I enjoyed was the studio classes and being there and recording music and producing people and figuring out the process and. When I finished college, I was, you know, mixed up, 22-year-old, 23-year-old, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, sitting in Rochester, New York, freezing. Um, And uh, I, what did I do? I went to New York for, like, an audio convention called AES. There's AES every year. They hold it in the Javits Center. It's pretty awesome. There's, like, talks with all these big engineers and 
you know, um, there's all kinds of gear vendors everywhere on a big floor, and it's it's pretty fun um, if you're into that stuff. Uh, but I went and I saw a talk with an engineer I really liked, Michael Brower, um, and he I wanted to work for him, and I hit him. I I think I hit up like his management company or something to try and get some info. And some receptionist sent me a message back saying, yeah, he said to go work at Electric Lady, an intern, um, and take it from there. And I, I figured out that he actually worked there, didn't work at the studio. He, had a, like, he was an in-resident mix engineer, so he had one of the studio rooms in the basement, like the downstairs of the studio, really nice room. So, yeah, that was it. I literally threw everything I owned in a U-Haul and just moved right to New York City and just started interning. That's crazy. That's that's fantastic. How, how so how long have you been are you still an intern right now or have you <clears throat> No, typically, the... typically you intern, you know, for 3 months and then you're out, offered a job or you kind of move on or you know, sometimes you stick around if there's not really a position that opened up and mm. you part-time, you know. So, Electric Lady, I think I interned for like 3 or 4 months and then I worked on staff for like five or six months and gotcha moved on to uh another studio that i still work at from time to time sear sound in new york which is fucking awesome I think. Uh, yeah yeah that's fantastic man it sounds like i mean to some extent you you live kind of a saturated in the the creative process life like e- even when you're doing te- the technical back-end work like you're still uh, working within the creative process and to some extent. Do you ever get like tired of that? Do you ever think, oh man, I wish I could just check people out at a <laughs> gas register or something for a day, you know? <laughs> um, I guess sometimes, you know, it's the nature of the work that's fatiguing because mm. you have to imagine a gig like working in a studio is really, um, like the industry is saturated. There's a lot of people who want to work in studios mm-hmm. and there's not a lot of jobs. So the gigs tend to like not pay that well um, or be just kind of crazy hours. Mm. Um, and that's not always the truth. Um, but that's kind of the part that can be most fatiguing, you know, just kind of have to having to work, um, a lot of hours for sometimes not a lot of pay. Gotcha. And, yeah. you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm grateful for the work and there's a lot of sessions that have been amazing. Um, but it's not something I'd recommend if somebody wants to, you know, put a down payment on a house or, just <laughs> to do something more practical. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, cool, man. I, I uh, that, that's fantastic. I feel like um, I, I, it shows in your music how versed you are in the engineering and and production side of things. Like it is very well put together music. But I don't oh, think I, you, yeah, yeah, I don't think I, I knew that about you before. I thought you, I, honestly, I expect everybody I meet these days is just obsessed with music and sits in their you know their bedroom. Uh, obsessing over it forever. Well, I, I I like that you've shared such a like a vivid and detailed um, journey up to this point. And, and I want to ask you if you right now could give your past self. And I'm thinking the day you loaded up that U-Haul and and moved into to New York City, um, if you could send that that younger Moon Glow, that younger Jeff, uh, a piece of advice, what would that advice be? Oh man, I don't know. It's, um. I think just to release more music earlier, you know, I'm going to be 29, you know, Um, and I've been recording music probably since I've been 15, 16. And, you know, when I was like 15 or 16, I probably put like six songs up on MySpace or something like that. And um, but then I didn't really release anything for like a good seven years, eight years. And it's not like I didn't record things, you know. I would still write songs and record them. I just would not take it seriously. You know, I'd record them and I'd keep it for me or I'd share it with friends or something, you know. And, um, you know, I have no regrets. I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. But I I think um, I probably was a little too... Um, I probably overthunk things just a little too much at the time, you know, just thinking it wasn't my best material or I wasn't happy with it um, and or I wanted it to sound better or something. And I think it's important for the process just to commit and just to put things out because I think you really grow the second you just let go of something and put it out. 
you wish you had shared more stuff earlier and not maybe been so uh, critical of it, you know, in, in its earlier or earlier stages. When do you think you put that together? I think just being around session work, you know, and like, mm. you know, realizing that I got into the studio just to get to a place where I could comfortably make my own records and feel good about them. And just actually like having some sessions with some artists I really like yeah. and seeing their process and realizing that just like, it's the same. Everybody's got this, you know, it's just some people like, People, um, it's like anything in life where you're more successful, the more diligent and the more focused and the more you really like work on yourself and develop your craft. And Mm. um, some people I've worked with just aren't that um, musically inclined necessarily. You know, they're um, they've had success and they're doing something right because they're, you know, they're making money and they're. Mm -hmm. I just, I think there's kind of more sides to the equation just than like making a song or recording a song, you know, mm-hmm. the idea of like being a, a person that makes music and releases music. Like, you yeah, actually, absolutely. You have to put it out, you know, like the best, there's some Reddit quote somewhere where somebody's, was at like a tech meeting and they were like lambasting some guy's like project and that he worked on or something, I don't know. And one guy in the room was like, hey, sometimes the best feature is just done. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, and I, yeah. I think you just got to get it done. Sometimes. It's funny. I read this week in a in a book called The Artist's Way. Have you ever read that book? You know, I have it sitting right behind me. That's it's a good one, man. It's a, it gets a little. <laughs> I think there's a little voodoo in there, but I I'm kind of a fan of a little voodoo, so I, I really enjoy it. But yeah, um, the, mor- the morning pages, man. Yes, yes. Journaling, just in general, man. Let's end the episode right now. Everyone has learned what they need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she she's sometimes she talks about herself like a little you know she's like I helped I you know fixed mm. everything about this guy or something you know yeah like, yeah okay, my billionaire it. friend was obsessed with yachts and now he paints it's like Julia <laughs> shut up just tell me how to be yeah, a better like, guitar player <laughs> I get it Julia you're dope you're doing something right okay just yeah. tell me how to fucking do this <laughs> exactly but she she said uh just in I think the page I was reading yesterday the the section I was reading yesterday um, often it is audacity as opposed to talent that will make someone famous or successful in art. So like the, the willingness to say, yes, this is good enough. Everyone should give it a try is more important than convincing yourself. It's perfect. You know, it's convincing yourself to give it a try. Exactly. Yeah. You need like a little bit of healthy narcissism. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, Um, absolutely. You just gotta, you gotta have a thought and be like, I think this is dope and I just want to put this out. I like it. Speaking of thinking something is dope and putting it out, why don't you introduce Big Deal for us and we can all listen to it together. Oh, sure, man. So this is when um, I started writing those first two singles that I put out after I quit a studio gig that I wasn't having a good time at and I was feeling pretty depressed and I broke up with like a long-term girlfriend and um, so I wrote these kind of like two blasé songs and uh, Big big Deal is... Um, you know, kind of speaks for itself a little bit. It's just kind of like, don't, it's like a mantra, you know, to just not, um, not get caught up and hung up on just minutia. Um, there's kind of like a big picture and a, you know, larger curve to what's happening. Yeah. I don't know. Just feeling frustrated about, you know, situations in my life that felt like they were just so, um, yeah, just about minutia. You really lasted for one day Maybe made it to two nights Stopped down by the front desk Got all the frustration off your chest When the band plays a soft stage An empty house at the concert hall Such a dismal and grim place Feels like a boat missed a curtain call Then sweat the small stuff it ain't a big deal We'll all be dead soon anyways Don't sweat the small stuff It ain't a big deal We'll all be dead soon anyways If it was real flesh Don't let the head hang Yeah, just lift up the tongue now Throwing bottles at shadows Speaking only with eye rolls Inconvenient as always 
It ain't no cup holder armrest Don't sweat the small stuff It ain't a big deal We'll all be dead soon Anyways Don't sweat the small stuff It ain't a big deal I don't often feel like songs are too short, you know. Most most songs I accept for exactly what they are, but I probably could have gone for a second half of it. <laughs> yeah, I think um I probably could have thrown another section in there, but Yeah, it's it's good though, man. I really really enjoy just I was I was saying in the chat while it was going like it, it it's like somehow the the lyrics and the melody came first and everything are playing around it in in the beautiful like uh, for some weird reason, it gives me the mental image of how galaxies spin. <laughs> Maybe it's because you've got moon in your name, and I'm, oh, I'm thinking that, a little extraterrestrially. Uh, you know, I, it's funny you say that. I had a video that was kind of like what you're saying, like galaxy spinning. Yeah, yeah. I never put it out. I don't. I forgot about it. Actually, I should put it oh, up online. Man. It's yes, kind of cool. Now that you've mentioned it here, all the millions of people who listen to this podcast are going to be looking for it <laughs> and put it out. So, so let, take me through just kind of the process of how you uh, created that song. And if, if that one's a little too far from your memory, really what I want is your creative process in general. How did you make art? Those two songs were really natural um, because I was in such um, a like, bad emotional place at the time. You know, it was like I had like, the, OK, I quit the gig. Like the gig was awesome. The studio was amazing. I just it was so rough. It was just me and the manager, and it was like over a hundred hours a week. I was getting paid like, like six hundred or seven hundred dollars a week, um, like before taxes, and um, you know literally like li what working so far. Cal like if you do the math, it's so far below minimum wage. And once again, I don't pay attention to that shit. It's just as long as I can pay my rent and get by and the gig's great and the, the session works awesome but it was just so rough um just the personality stuff at the gig and um the hours like i was st i realized i was starting to resent the studio i was starting to hate it and this is something that was sacred to me like i loved it so much i'd idealized this thing and um you know was so obsessed with it and i was actually starting to hate it i was like starting to be like man i'm gonna move to florida and like teach scuba diving or something you know, for, you know, like, <laughs> is that always your your go-to uh backup plan yeah that's that's the that's the big plan b <laughs> um but yeah um so when i left the gig uh, my buddy um who has a project called white clips his name's rafe he's awesome um he was starting to perform out with like a four-piece of his band and he was making a bunch of music and he had just got signed um some deal with a label and he was um you know invited me to come hang and make music with him so i was playing a little bass in his band and i realized like i had like new music that i was just you know like when you i don't like uh, i feel like this like a lot of people get like this but when i was in such like a shitty place like with you know breaking up with my ex and leaving this gig and also just like not having an apartment for a minute so my folks live down in new jersey so I was commuting to New Jersey and working in New York and staying with my folks for like a couple of months. So all three of those factors were like really fucking me up. And so those two songs kind of just like spilled out. Now, the first one, uh, Hurts Like Hell, was, you know, just like frustration about the breakup. Like I found out my, you know, my ex had cheated on me. Um, and it was like, you know, this whole complicated, big, angry mess. And um, not angry, but, you know, just like hurt mess and um yeah so that song spilled out and i hung out i just came over to rave's apartment and we we cut it in his apartment i just brought like my gear over and, um they have like drums set up in their apartment so we recorded it right there and um it just felt really natural finishing that and same with big deal like big deal was just a song i'd kind of been hanging on to for a while and originally had this kind of weird version of it with like upright bass and programmed drums um 
it was pretty bad. But then I showed it to um, those dudes, and we just did it in the same night as the other track. And yeah, it all it all came together naturally. Like honestly, this EP I'm working on, did, um, you know, it's fun to work on, but it just didn't. It took. It felt a lot more like I had to work on it. When you sit down with um just the, the, the inkling of an idea and it's not this, this writing itself spilling out type song. Like what, what does that process look like? Do you start chords or lyrics or how do, how do you go about that? Um, you know, I think that's funny because, you know, we went, we mentioned the artist's way and I think it's kind of part, part of what the, the nature of that book is about. Um, you know, not, not just, being like untapped create like um being able to have like a free flow of untapped creativity you know and being able to come up with things and um exercise that muscle and um you know like that's the whole point of the morning page is just like keeping the flow moving and so i i think that's probably the main way i write for the most part um like momentary inspiration and then i just kind of like build on that like idea like that like um you know like you, like like the you like build upon this like crystal you just kind of keep building it bigger and bigger but the you know that can be kind of slow sometimes or like you have pockets of like where you maybe not writing a ton like at least it i I think i justified it by saying i've been mixing and finishing this record but i I haven't been writing a ton you know for the past like three or four months i'm in like finishing mode right now do you find there's like a a a pent-up frustration uh, like a desire to write, but you need to mix, or is it kind of refreshing? Right? Do you feel like you're recharging some sort of creative battery in this time that you're not writing? Man, I don't know. I think if I had the money, like if I would just pay somebody else to mix my material, you know, that I really oh, yeah. liked. But yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I'm like already fucked up, to, like because I'm I'm working in studio, so I think I'm a little arrogant. Like I I have to do it, or I would have mm. to pay somebody else who like i would really respect to like work on it or mm-hmm. something so i just end up doing it and then you know sometimes i don't know if anybody else runs into this but sometimes it's like a drag like obsessing over and mixing your own material you know because i can um sometimes it's really fun and really natural but sometimes i just obsess over like one thing so i, I want to talk more with you just about um how you go about promoting your work once it once once you've released this this track what are you doing as far as laying groundwork for more people's ears to to have access to it um so i've been i've been working so on my last record you know i didn't really do anything too crazy you know i put out the song i told friends and family and i i did i think i budgeted like a hundred dollars for submit hub um and i i didn't I think I maybe got like four bites and some like write ups and like small playlists, and it was cool. You know, you know, it was nice to have some stuff to like post on Instagram and whatnot. Um, but and then I I tried to hack like the whole um, like running ads on YouTube thing with Google AdSense. Um, and so I think I didn't budget a lot for that. I think I tried like twenty bucks and just tried to insert like my music videos and similar situations and see how it performed and you know got some views and it seemed all right but it just didn't seem totally organic so i wasn't i didn't feel that great about it um but for this round um i've been working with a buddy who's been helping me plan the release a little better um just so i can stay organized and then i think i'm gonna budget money like to actually hire somebody who does like run social media campaigns and can kind of help out with that sort of thing a little more like i i'll make the content prepare the content but they'll kind of plan it out yeah yeah that's cool i i recently started using a site called recur which it has a paid format but it's got an option in there where basically you you set up uh you know a hundred posts ahead of time and you say post it every you know monday wednesday friday and you can click a button, and this is this is the part I want to talk about. You can click a button that says, "Just post it at the best time of day." <laughs> what is that? What's the best time what? of day? Oh, it's like what's been determined, like on average, yeah. to be the most. Yeah, like, 
the the algorithm determines the, the I guess the time the most eyes will see it. Um, so there's there's a there's an entire like layer of of witchcraft going on there, man. That's really good to know, man. I didn't know about that at all. That's cool. Oh yeah, Ch- check it out. Some yeah, cool, man. I'm excited to see like just exactly how that um, uh, I guess th- those efforts towards setting a budget and and working with uh, you know somebody with a little bit more of a, a professional edge as far as uh, promoting goes. I'm excited to see how that how that turns out for the release itself. Yeah, man. And honestly, if I was smart, I would have had like a pre-save link already that I could like drop in the chat and be like, everybody, pre- pre-save my song. I would like now to move into the uh, trivia portion of the interview, if that's okay with you. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So <laughs> I did not know exactly how to go about making a game or even trivia for you. So I have made a game called Moon Facts. Moon and Facts. It's just it's it's just about the moon. <laughs> well, mostly just about the moon. Um, so it's it's going to be three three uh, questions, and uh, you know, take all the time you need to to decide the the answer. Um, oh man, yeah, it, 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 it's easy. It's it's gonna be, it's gonna be very easy, very very low pressure. For, um, for instance, first question: Which ancient deity was often involved with moon symbolism? The Egyptian Thoth, the Greek Artemis, or the Roman Diana? Oh man! Right, give me give me the three options again. Uh, the Egyptian Thoth, the Greek Artemis, or the Roman Diana? I'm gonna say Artemis. I think that's wrong. Uh, Artemis is. Partially right. It's actually all three. All three of those oh, ancient three. deities from different cultures oh. all were either uh, 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 closely tied with the moon's origin story. The moon was closely tied with theirs. Artemis just holds a half moon in her hand for some reason. I don't, I'm not sure why. What so, does Thoth look like again? Is Thoth a bird? He's got like a bird head and an Egyptian hieroglyphic body, I'd say. Right. Egyptian yeah. mythology is so cool, man. It is. Uh, you know... A lot of mythology is is really cool, and it 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 gets to a strange point when you're like, oh, I kind of wish I I kind of wish that this wasn't like mytho. I wish I could believe this. I wish I could just be, you know, like I wish Egyptian uh, mythology could be my religion now because this is cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, question two: One hypothetical origin story for the moon says that a proto Earth was hit by a Mars sized ancient planet. What and and of course the the resulting debris became the moon. <clears throat> what was the name of that Mars-sized ancient planet? Lo, Theia, or Luna? Theia. It was Theia. Yeah, I really mm. thought the Luna would throw you off. Oh uh, yeah, no, yeah. That, com- that comes later, man. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah, Theia is the correct answer. Also, Lo is one of Jupiter. So, you know, that was another uh, trick question. All right. Nice, nice. You, you are, you are uh, I'm going to say one and a half for two because, you know, Artemis was technically a right answer. Moon facts, baby. <laughs> moon facts. Yeah. Who better than Moon Glow to clear up all this, this trickery and moon logic? You know, I'm going to update the Wikipedia after this. Chris, you got to introduce like triggered sounds into the interview. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, you got to, you got to have like an air horn sound. Yes. An air <laughs> horn. An audience clapping. I'm just going to sample you doing that and make that my air horn sound. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Last question is an essay question. In 500 words or less, a teenager is bitten by a wolf while out on a camping trip in the woods. Mm -hmm. He gets home and finds he has a fever and the bite mark has started to grow extra hair. What should this teenager do to be sure he makes it to the senior prom in three weeks? Oh, this is like a movie reference. I've never seen the movie. If I mean, I'm sure this has happened in the movie. I just don't know the movie. What should he do to make it? Make sure he gets to the senior prom in three weeks. Three. He has three weeks. The oh. bites already started to grow hair. Oof! Some bad things are happening. He's kind of fucked, man. I don't know. He's got to go to like urgent care. He's gotta, okay. Um, I don't know. What's the cure for like being a werewolf? What do you have to do? I don't know. You stay away from silver, I think, because um, that'll kill you. But I mean, I mean, so so it's it's obvious he is definitely a werewolf. There's no other explanation. Yeah, he's growing hair. Like he's he's. Gonna, I mean, but it, you know, as long as prom isn't like when there's a full moon, he's right. He's he's good, right? Isn't that how werewolves work? 
I think so, yeah. They, they come back to their human form, you know? Um, yeah, or maybe he just can't go to after prom. Like, he can go to prom, but when the moon comes out, you know, he's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, so apparently there's a, there's a character uh, who takes a potion to, to prevent his, his uh, lycanthropy. Um, oh, yeah, Remus no, Lupin? I, I guess so. Yeah, re- yeah, yeah, from Harry Potter. Okay, my bad. I don't, I've seen some Harry Potters, but I don't remember much Harry Potters. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know Remus Lupin. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, so, so I think your, your, your basic answer for anybody who is definitely not me, who is a t- regular human teenager who has a bite that's growing hair should go see urgent care. Uh, I get that. I think that's a good like first step. Go to the emergency room maybe. And maybe like, you know, oh, not nah, man. I think I would check the calendar first and I would, I would that's like, true. you know, analyze like really what's going to happen on that day of prom if it's even a problem if it's yeah. a problem you know you got you know i don't know you, you got to go to your camera man <laughs> yes maybe penicillin can can push back the uh the modern, eventual transformation modern medicine has some tricks you know just, it's true get a shot of steroids there are way fewer werewolves around now than there were in like the 1700s so it must be modern medicine that's keeping us safe that's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, hey, man, I'm really, I'm really grateful for your insightful moon facts today. I think um, I th- I'm going to count that as a win. You know, it's a really responsible answer. Thanks, I man. hope whoever, it's, that is definitely not me, has been bitten by a dog and is growing extra hair, goes and does what you say as soon as this interview is over. <laughs> All right. I, I hope so. <laughs> Howdy again, y'all. Uh, it's, it's me, your favorite host, fresh back from the hospital. Uh, they told me I am not a werewolf, but I am definitely eating too much pizza. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. I hope you're enjoying the interview so far. And I hope also you're enjoying Jeff's personality and his, uh, his insights, his music, and, and just all the things that the show has to offer, both uh, the artist and to you, the listener. I hope you're finding it encouraging to get creating your own music, your own art in some way, and start sharing it the way you know Jeff kind of wishes he had earlier in his career. Uh, what you have to say and what you have experienced are all going to come out in your art, and that is going to be a unique perspective and a unique creation, and I look forward to experiencing it with you. Uh, please check out the show notes, of course, for a uh, link to everything uh, for for this show and for Jeff's work. And like and subscribe and leave a review if you can. I appreciate you. Last uh, little section of our of our uh, interview is is uh, kind of based on more of the the, the future. You know, like I, I'm gonna want to know exactly when this EP is supposed to come out. First off, um, so. I kind of forgot that the election is like on November eighth or whatever. So that's the only thing I wanted to avoid. Like I didn't want to like drop my EP like on election day or like before election day or something. Mm. Um, or the whole EP isn't going to drop. It's just the first single. Um, oh, gotcha. The first single, "Fall Asleep on Repeat," I think is going to come out. Either I haven't uploaded it yet, but it's going to be November second or November third. Um, November second is my birthday, so it might be cool. To, I I felt like it might be cool to put it out on my birthday. Yeah, yeah, that that would be cool, man. It would be a um, uh, an interesting thing to. <laughs> Thank if, you, like, if you have like a um a, a, a Facebook, you know, everybody remembers your birthday on Facebook because Facebook tells them to remember it. You know. Yeah, and exactly. As, it's like as a people are promotion from Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As people are coming to say happy birthday, you can just say it's my it's my single. It's out. <laughs> yeah. It's dropped. Click it. You know. Yeah, I didn't think <laughs> of that. These algorithms working for us. You know. That's awesome, that's good, man. That's a good call. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to ask, too. This is probably my favorite question to ask, and I, I mentioned that in most interviews that it's my favorite question to ask. I'm sure everyone is uh, tired of me uh, being a robot. I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm partially a robot. Um, <laughs> but, but why do you make music? What is it you're hoping um, the listeners, uh, your own life, or, or the, you know, the world at large uh, get out of what you've created? Um. I think there's something kind of like exciting and dangerous about like having this whole palette of feelings and just the idea of like being able to recreate like the same feeling that I've gotten from listening to music that's really dear to me. 
um, it just feels like a power, you know, like the, and the people who make it are like superheroes to me. And, um, you know, I don't know, it just feels so natural and good as a human to express and make stuff. And Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, all of that. I don't know, it just feels good to make music. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Like, it, uh, it's, it's not a feeling that needs a lot of uh, analysis. You know, you, you don't have to look at what you've created and say, I feel good. Should I feel guilty for feeling good? It just is wholesome, good feeling, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. I, I appreciate that. And I hope uh, one of my big goals just in life in general, but, but also making this show, is that more people will uh, be creative with their time. You know, like I, I feel like there's this, this myth or illusion, and we've both read The Artist Way, and we know that there's, there's, a, there's a, an insurgency seeking to undo this myth. Um, that creativity is reserved for better, richer, smarter people, you know, that, that somehow we are all outside the, the reach of this good feeling of putting our thoughts and our feelings down and transmitting these ideas through music and through practice and talent. And I think it's, uh, it's excellent, man, that you are, I guess, identifying that desire in yourself and, and putting out such good work because that in itself, like the quality of your music is going to inspire others to pick up their instrument or their craft in some uh, more engaging way, man. I'm, I'm grateful for you. Thanks, man. Um, I'm grateful you for, I'm grateful for you and I'm grateful for the whole community here. I think, um, you know, it's, um, it's super fun making music and talking about it and, you know, going on this journey of trying to just be a better artist. Yeah, absolutely. It, it Yeah. Fantastic, man. I want to give you an option, uh, uh, an opportunity, really. Uh, uh, it, you don't even have to have an answer for this one, but, but you can. Um, a, a piece of homework for me specifically, but also for the listeners. So, so one album, one book, one movie, one video game, one uh, poster you saw one time that you think everybody should experience before they die. Oh, okay. What was the first one? Oh, do you, want me to give you, do you want me to give you one of each or just one oh, of those? No, no, no. Just, just one thing. One thing that you would suggest we all check out. Oh, okay. What are the options again? I'm sorry. Anything. Oh, just like a piece of art. Piece yeah, of pretty much. Um, oh, interesting. Um, Very interesting. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of a really good answer. Um, you know, I think it's just like records that I've like really loved and been obsessed yeah. with and I've been obsessed with the um the the process and just the history and figuring out how things are made. Yeah. Um, yeah, are you somebody who reads all the engineering notes or like the engineer and producer's names like in the liners? Oh, uh, straight up. The first vinyl, yeah. The second I hear a track I like, I go on all music and I see everybody who worked on it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, in that case, you don't have to narrow it. One, what are a few uh records that have really um really just changed the way you encountered the making music but also just some engineering that that hits you and, and for like forever changed the way that you wanted music to end up sounding after some engineering um well jeff buckley uh grace for sure that record yes. that's you know in my opinion you know certainly one of the greatest records of all time it's everything about it's perfect jeff buckley is an you know an, an amazing vocalist an artist yeah um, and the, you know, the engineer in that record is Andy Wallace. Um, Andy Wallace is just a total badass and made so many records at that time that just had great sounding drums and tasteful <laughs> compression. And, um, you know, he works on SSL consoles and, um, they recorded that record, I think up at Alaire Studios in New York, mm. like Glen, Glen Tonch, New York at like, uh, it's like a destination studio in like the woods and like the like a mountain or something that's it's awesome pretty, it's pretty beautiful and awesome um and uh the record's just so perfect and sounds mm. so great and i just have memories like vivid memories of my friend drew playing the record for me as like a 15 16 year old and him obsessing over it and it just um yeah really setting a tone for like 
um, the rest of my life. You know, I, I love that record. Um, yeah. And then just everything else I grew up with, you know, just kind of like followed really closely, like bands like The Strokes. Um, mm. And um, I don't know, there's definitely like a handful of other records that really, you know, just like drove it home. Yeah, yeah. That's session. awesome, man. I, I will, this is the second time a, a, a guest has really talked up Grace, and I've, I've certainly listened to it, um, but I, I feel like I need to uh, listen slower, you know, sit and read and um, take in the lyrics, take in the, uh, the art while listening to it. Like sometimes music or listening to music is a, a passive while you're doing something else activity, but I found yeah. a lot of enjoyment, kind of like that car ride home, reading the, the CD booklet, you know, while the car plays the CD, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. man. You just gotta, you know, put it on, put it on a good set of speakers and crank it up, turn the lights yeah. down. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll do, man. Homework accepted. But I, I want to give you a moment, uh, introduce this last track we're going to listen to, Fall Asleep on Repeat, um, and we will listen to it together. If you have some time after that, uh, usually we do like community questions, but you know, if you, oh, if you don't sure. have time, that's fine. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I no longer have to split, so whatever you want. That's true, yeah. <laughs> so everybody go ahead and start thinking of your questions and type them in once we finish the song and we'll get to them. Yeah, think away. <laughs> go ahead and uh, introduce this song. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, so the song is called Fall Asleep on Repeat. Um, and uh, I kind of started talking about it earlier, but I, I just forgot about the song. And I was going through, I was organizing my files. And sometimes I just like search hard drives for Pro Tools files, like .ptx files, just mm. to see if there's like, because I'm like, look, with clients, like sessions and like files, uh, file management, I'm like very organized and very strict about nomenclature and just knowing where everything is and backing things up twice three times with my own stuff i'm so loose <laughs> and just frequently i'll find like a rogue session just like hiding on a hard drive yeah and i'm like fuck this was a good song like why did i not copy this into like my main drive like my main studio folder like what am i doing and so i was going through files and i i found it and i saw the session and i like immediately kind of remembered what it was and I opened it up and it just sounded good as it was. And I was like, oh man, like, nice going, Jeff. Like, this is what you do. You just like make something and you do like a little bit, 35%, and then you abandon it. <laughs> and, um, and it was quarantine. So, and I was going to yeah. put out the four other songs in the EP anyways. So when I found that track, I was like, well, I just have to mix everything. So this track I'm going to actually finish. And I hit up another friend who, connected me with the girl who sings on the track mm. and um you know we caught like a quarantine studio hang and finished the track and nice and yeah man well i'm excited to excited to uh show it to everybody it it, it jams the the day you sent it to me i listened to it on repeat for probably 20 minutes just i was like this is this is a this is a song worth uh really examining <laughs> <laughs> thanks man It's all 
prayers have been answered by <laughs> sweet sweet jam of that song <laughs> <laughs> awesome man thanks for sharing that with us i uh, i'm excited to hear you know whatever i guess you, you still have some changes you're going to do to it before it, it ends up on the release yeah i mean that the version you heard there is that's like pretty much it like that's just with my like crappy master um and i gotcha. sent you i sent it to someone i like and i think you know it'll probably just come out like a little bigger and a little warmer Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. I'm excited to hear it. Um, I am also excited for the the first single to come out uh, on your birthday. When? So are you going to do five singles released independently, uh, stretched over some time, or are you going to do a single uh, in November and then a full thing later on? I think it's going to be the single and then just drop the rest of the EP in like a few weeks later, something like that. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. I'm I'm excited for it. I uh, I think it's it's gonna jam pretty hard. Uh, if you uh you know if you wanted to send me more of it before November, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> I, <you> know, <laughs> I, yeah, it's always nice to have an extra set of ears. You know? Awesome. I've got at least two ears, so I'm I'm down. At All least, right. at least, at least, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. I have I have had a really good time talking. Yeah, man. This is super fun. I was just gonna say thank you for having me on the show. Glad to, glad to. I'll, I'll be sure to put your, your links and stuff in the show notes so folks can find you and can uh, follow your new release and stuff like that. But also, of course, you know, you're, you're part of the IMF uh, community, so I'm sure if they uh, watch close enough, you'll probably let us know when your birthday and the release comes out. So <laughs> we'll, we'll be watching. Yeah, man. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping the drop in link um, as soon as I get it. So I'll give a, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make it clear. But Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, thank you guys for your support and for fucking coming to hang and listen. Um, it's awesome. Uh, respect all you guys and all the music you're making, and uh, grateful for the community. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Peace. I'm glad Jeff was able to share some time with me today talking about music and art and even promotion. Uh, I know he has a unique approach to it that has come from his own experiences and his own skill set, and each of us have, have access to the same thing. I hope you heard in his words not only things you can try, but also uh, a little invitation to the freedom of trying what works best for you. I'm also grateful that you took your time today to listen to this. I hope you uh, become a lifelong Moonglow fan. I hope you check out his upcoming release and follow and like and subscribe uh, to whatever it is that he puts out after this. But also, of course, uh, look into more episodes of this show and check out more artists. I do my best to curate a playlist on Spotify of all past guests. So as their new stuff comes out, I put it on the Staying Creative uh, playlist on Spotify. So check that out. Of course, if you have the ability to do so, it would help a lot if you uh, 
like this show or write a review of this show. Apparently that is how shows uh, spread word of mouth. I hope we get to share some more time very soon. Uh, But of course, until then, please stay courageous, stay curious, and stay creative.